What is up guys? Welcome to today's One Minute Clinic. And before we get started guys, don't forget if you want your question answered and turned into a One Minute Clinic like today, comment your questions down below and I will get to all of the videos. I have to start off today's video by issuing a formal apology to Raid Raid. This person has asked me to cover this topic multiple times and I have responded saying I was gonna add it into other videos that I didn't do. So I'm going to cover this topic today. As you guys saw from the thumbnail, we are working on the ball toss. I'm not gonna read their original comment because I do not know where it is because I've said I was gonna do it a bunch of times. But the last time that they commented, they said, great content. I have started to watch this video with much anticipation that you're going to address the biomechanics of the ball toss because you had sort of promised to in your reply to my comment a few weeks ago, again, I do apologize um, that you would address this issue in your next start video. I'm truly at a lack of focus on the ball toss biomechanics by coaches and videos, instructions and coaches alike. All the great stuff you guys put on, put about the serve rhythm, smooth no motion, muscle engagement, et cetera, et cetera, are all a waste of the toss is not there. Not incorrect at all. So I'm gonna address the ball toss in today's one minute clinic. Let's get started. So when we study the concept of tossing the ball, we have to break all of our inputs into two separate categories. And once you understand how these two categories work, doing the biomechanics of a ball toss become very easy. You have inputs and you have counter inputs. What that means is you have certain things that put force or direction into what the ball is supposed to do. But because the serve is a thing that you're controlling the ball as well as the racket, you sometimes have things that will actually work counter to what you're doing. For example, some people make the mistake of tossing when they lean backwards but trying to toss the ball in front. If you stood still, you have a lot of force here and no counter force. If you're leaning backwards when you toss, then that actually adjusts how much force is being put into the ball. Some people make the mistake on their toss because they don't actually understand that some of the things they're doing are actually countering what they're trying to do with the ball. So we're gonna start off by understanding the most basic one. When do you bend your knees? When you bend your knees is gonna directly in infer how much force is going into the ball. I tell people very regularly, stop bending your knees twice or stop bending your knees to help the ball go higher. There are plenty of people who do this and then stand up as they throw the ball. Now you're adding force in the direction of your toss you should actually be going in the opposite direction of bending your knees as you release the ball. That's actually gonna let the ball leave your hand in a slower motion and a more controlled motion because as much force as you're putting up into the air, you're also stepping away from it, which cancels some of that input. When you are a pinpoint server, for example, let's say I'm leaning this way, as I go to toss, my body mechanics are actually leaning toward the court. That's an input outside of my arm, meaning that even if I try to toss straight up, because I'm leaning in, the ball's actually moving away from me. So we have to put our toss mechanics into two categories. Is what I'm doing an input or is it a counter input? We want to make sure that certain things are canceling each other out. The most important one that we want to pay attention to is the bending of the knees. If you're timing the knee bend correctly, the ball will leave your arm in a slower, more controlled motion. If you're standing up as you toss that ball, you're actually gonna end up adding a lot of force. So tip number one, you want your counter input of the knees to go away from your toss. So switching it to this angle here, where you can actually see where my racket is going, another thing that people need to do when they are practicing their toss, do not do this thing here, please. Make sure when you are tossing and practicing, I see people do this all the time. They screw up their toss and then they're like, all right, the ball needs to go there. The ball needs to go there. You're taking all the mechanics out of the body to focus on the thing that's moving solo. But as we've just said, there are other things that are gonna cancel out or add to what this ball is doing. That even if you toss it perfectly every time, as soon as you go to add in moving the racket or twisting your body, you're gonna end up moving that ball with whatever those mechanics are. So make sure as you practice your toss, you are practicing your toss in your actual motion. If you're a person who rotates big, that's fine. If you're a person who rotates barely, that's fine. But make sure you're practicing all of the things when you practice your toss. So moving on to input and counter input number two. Body rotation. When you toss, pay attention to where you want the ball to go. So let's say I'm going to toss it for a flat serve, which means that the ball needs to be pretty much straight in front of me. If I'm rotating my body, 
and I haven't tossed the ball yet, I have to actually bring this ball back into this position where I'm going to rotate to. If I'm a person who doesn't rotate that much, then I can pretty much just raise my arm up in front of me. So paying attention to how much body rotation you're adding into your toss is going to tell you how much cancellation you need to do. If you're a person who rotates big, then you're a person who also need, is going to need to toss the ball away from your rotation. So if I toss without rotating, I would toss the ball off to my side. But if I toss while rotating, I can toss and leave that ball perfectly where I need that ball to be. So if you're, again, pay attention to how much input and counter input we have. Moving on to the mechanics of the arm. And again, input and counter input. The toss is going to be controlled primarily from the shoulders. You can have a little bit of elbow and you can have a little bit of hand. And when I say a little bit, I mean like 2% out of 100%. But for the most part, you're gonna want the ball resting in your hands and you're going to lift your shoulder to the point of where you need that ball to be released. If you release, or if you stop early, you toss the ball away from you. If you stop too late, you toss the ball behind you. Rest that ball in your fingers and only hold on to it with your thumb. All you're doing is at a certain point, you're just gonna let the thumb go and the ball's gonna literally roll out of your fingers at the location that you need it to be. So resting it in here, you don't want to bring the ball back into these positions. Remember, it's all about where you're going to be throwing from and where you need the ball to land in combination with just letting your thumb release off the racket. Sorry, release off the ball. Do not try to bring the ball into certain spots. Just work on the timing of taking this little thing right here and just taking it off the ball. And lastly, as you guys know from all the videos I've done, I am huge on paying attention to the intent of what you want this ball to do. Do not go practice tossing the ball, in air quotes, without an intent on what type of toss it's going to be, because that's going to directly correlate to the types of inputs and counter inputs you're going to need. For example, if I'm going to hit a flat serve, I need to toss the ball right about here, right in front of me, so that I can rotate my body into that position. If I'm going to toss a kick serve, that ball is going to be more off to my left side here, so that I can bring the racket back to that position. How much different is that going to be in terms of releasing with my thumb? How much different is that going to be in terms of inputs with my legs going away from the ball or with my body rotating one direction or the other? When you're practicing your toss, you don't just practice tossing. You practice a toss for a specific serve. You should be coming to your lessons or to your practice and saying, my slice serve toss is trash or my kick serve toss is bad. Not, I don't know how to toss the ball. Most people actually would be way better at tossing the ball if they didn't think they could hit every serve in every location from the same toss. You can put them close together, but you cannot hit an identical serve or all three of the serves off of the same toss. So you're gonna want to practice getting your body into a kick serve position versus getting your body and the inputs and counter inputs into a slice serve position. I'm gonna have to let my thumb go later to get a kick earlier to get a slice and in the middle to hit the ball flat. I'm gonna to have to rotate and counter my rotation more or less depending on where I'm gonna be trying to strike the ball. So when you step on the court to practice these different motions, you have to make sure that you put the ball relative to where the serve is that you want to practice. If you're a natural slice server, then you should be putting the ball where your slice serve is gonna happen. If you're a natural flat server or kick server, you should be putting the ball in those spots. And then again, practicing those tosses within the mechanics of where that ball needs to be and within the mechanics of what your serve usually looks like. Do not practice your toss with just this because if you have a perfect motion with just your arm and then you add in a knee bend, now all that release timing is gonna be changed because your whole angle of your body is now moving differently. So if I was letting go of here, which would be perfect for bringing the ball right up in front of me, and then I bend my knees, that perfect release is now gonna be going behind me. So pay attention to what the goals are of the toss and then add in the mechanics with it. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. It was meant to be quick and simple because it's not a big technical thing. You wanna make sure you're just paying attention to the three things I said. What do you want the ball to do in terms of where it's supposed to be? What are your inputs and what are your counter inputs? Anything that you do when you're tossing the ball is going to have to be undone or partially undone with what your body's doing 
at the same time. So if you're trying to toss straight, but you're twisting away, then you'd have to toss more into the court so that the ball lands in the same place. If you're trying to toss to your left and you're not a big person who rotates their body, then you're just gonna move your arm to the left or move your arm to the right, depending on what you need the ball to do. But if you're a person who's bending a lot or twisting a lot or tilting a lot, everything you do with your arm is gonna have to be used to cancel out those things or add to those things to put the ball where it needs to go. Serving is one of the most difficult things to master just because it's the thing you have full control over and it's also a thing that has a lot of moving parts that have to syncopate and synchronize at the same time. But serving toss is something that has just as many things that you have to learn to coordinate. So give it the respect it deserves. But that's gonna wrap up the video, guys. If you thought this was beneficial, please send it off to somebody that you know that needs it. But until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.